Sometimes it's not the simplicity of the question, but how unexpected the question seems. Doris, my wife of 23 years, just asked me, Are you going to headquarters this month? Seems simple enough. A quick calculation says I've been doing this for over a hundred months straight. I am the manager of a large grocery store. My store is part of a national chain and one of the most profitable in the region. I attend monthly meetings on the second Thursday of every month. I am on a 7 a.m. flight and returning on a 10 p.m. flight. It's a long day, but always full of meetings and presentations. We end the day with a team-building dinner. I get home around 1 a.m. and usually work half a day that Friday. At my job, I hire more teenagers than adults. They are known for asking questions that have little to do with what they actually want to ask. Something like, will we have fresh food this Saturday? Often followed a few minutes later by the question, can I take Saturday off? This seems off topic, but Doris hasn't asked me about going to this meeting in at least five years. She knows I'll go. There's no need to ask. Why then did she need confidence this time? In poker, I think they call it a tell. I made a mental note. Later in the evening, I paid the bills. In fact, I handle almost every aspect of our financial lives. Doris's most recent credit card statement for her individual account shows a couple of purchases at Angie's Elegant Rags Fashion Boutique. Nothing strange except that she had previously criticized them for their absurd prices. Years ago, I discovered that when Doris wanted to hide a birthday or Christmas present, she would hide them under extra blankets in the hallway linen closet. The next morning, while Doris was in the shower, I checked her hiding place and found nothing. I guess you can't always be lucky, but it also told me that the purchase wasn't made with me in mind. I combed through her closet, but to no avail. I almost forgot about that purchase until Friday after work. One of my chores was to inflate the tire on Doris's car. When I was looking for the compressor in her trunk, I found two bags from Angie's Elegant Rags. One bag contained a box of blue high-heeled shoes. The other wore a light blue cocktail dress. The soles of the shoes were scratched. They were in use. It doesn't take much imagination to think that once the shoes have been worn, the dress is no longer in perfect condition either. Was there some party I forgot about? It didn't make sense. Why hide the dress? Surprise at a party? For what? Our 46th birthdays were a few months ago. Our wedding anniversary was a month ago. There was no reason for my work to reward me in any way. I couldn't think of a compelling reason to hide the dress and shoes. Perhaps the dress and shoes were not hidden at all. Leaving them in the trunk may have been a mistake. Above all, my guesses stood the fact that the shoes were used. I made another mental note. On Saturday afternoon, after I finished mowing the lawn, I ran up the stairs, undressed, and turned on the shower. I bought shampoo earlier that day. It was in a bag on the stairs. I put the shampoo on the first step so I wouldn't forget it. It worked well. I wrapped a towel around myself and headed back down the stairs. I heard Doris's cell phone ringing. Doris answered her cell phone, so I remained silent. I grabbed the shampoo bag and started up the stairs. Hey, sis, how are you? We'll talk about this when Buck isn't around. He's upstairs taking a shower. Okay. Love you, too. Bye. Doris's sister, Mindy, is two years younger than Doris, and she and I try to avoid each other. We used to get along, but after her divorce, she thinks all men are scum. I can't wait to spend time with her, and Doris knows it. It's not that she's mean to me. It's just that she has such a negative attitude towards men. Mindy has her own quirk. You never know what color her hair will be from visit to visit. I can't understand some of those bright colors. Maybe you're walking through the mall and you see someone with an ice cream and you think, I could probably look like that. I thought about this conversation while taking a shower. I never thought about spying on Doris. With two recent strange events and the tone of what I just heard, the scales tip towards espionage. This is not the time to put off calling, I'm going to run out of business. Do you need anything? I can't think of anything. My first stop was the library. I used their computers to search the internet for a voice-activated voice recorder. I found the right one and then found a store that sold it. After shopping, I stopped at my grocery store and bought some fruit and snacks. It's better to come back with something if I'm running errands. Dora spends a lot of time in the kitchen. Her computer workstation is in the corner, at the kitchen table. 
she can turn her chair and look at the TV on the wall in the living room. I attached the recording device to the side of the fan. The fan needed cleaning, so this became my cover. My name is Buck. Counting the time we dated, Doris and I have been together for 25 years. We both started out as fitness enthusiasts, but that ended a long time ago. I could do with losing 50 pounds, and Doris, although still slim, could easily lose 30. I'm not a vain person, so my excess weight doesn't bother me at all. Doris complains about being overweight and starts a diet, but after a few weeks the diet becomes history. I'm busy with housework and my motorcycle. We spend many weekends with our neighbors. Doris reads books and watches a lot of reality TV. I could never get into those TV shows. Doris works as a receptionist at a hospital. Our only child, Jason, married Kelly a year ago. And we are proud grandparents to Jared, who is six weeks old. When Kelly returns to work in a few weeks, Doris plans to start daycare to save them on child care costs. Doris plans to reduce her hours at the hospital. She keeps the money she earns for her personal fund. When we first got married, Doris and I were like stereotypical newlyweds. We had sex in the morning or evening, or both. This went on for several months until Doris discovered that she was pregnant. Perhaps typical, the sex began to wane until a few months after Jason was born. He never returned. For the next 20 years, we had sex a couple of times a week. Over the past few years, the frequency has decreased to once a week. I tried to broach the subject. Doris, don't you think we should see a marriage counselor or something like that to see if they can help bring energy back into our love life? I think you're overestimating. Don't you still get it at least once a week? Yeah, but it seems pretty mechanical right now. I'm just trying to find a way to make it romantic again. We don't need some psychiatrist smirking at us. We're fine the way we are. I'm going shopping. That's all as we stand. It's hard to imagine that all married couples go through this. We used to go to flea markets or go to the zoo, but now she sits and watches her recorded TV shows. I ride a motorcycle to pass the time. Doris used to go with me, but that was also several years ago. We lived together, and that's it. I thought that when Jared showed up, things might change. It must have changed since Doris spends a lot of time at Jason's. About a year ago, after at least a couple of years of being together, I visited a divorce lawyer. She stated the facts. I had to pay Doris a significant allowance. Content? How do you keep your car running? Although I asked a lawyer to draw up the paperwork, I ultimately decided that perhaps I was overestimating the situation. I really didn't want to hurt Doris. I just wanted my life back. Living with someone who enjoyed his time with me. I put the divorce papers on my desk. I haven't brought this up with Doris, but living with someone who acts like she'd rather be somewhere else is getting hard to bear. I think it started when Jason left for college. She seemed lost in the empty house. I don't think she cheated on me, but I trusted her completely at the time so I could easily ignore the red flags if they were flying. Obviously, these recent events have caused me to question my unconditional trust. What kept bothering me was that I had so many opportunities to change and I remained completely faithful. The store has many regular customers, and many of them are single widows and divorcees. I was winked at, groped, and even propositioned, but I survived it all. I just assumed that Doris saw in me what I saw in her and would never leave. Reality is offensive. I found this great little voice-to-text tool. I insert the memory card from the recorder into my laptop and launch this tool. It downloads everything and creates a TXT file. I can then quickly review the results and see if there is anything alarming. The only downside to where I place the recorder is that I need a stool to reach it. I have to wait until Doris goes to bed before reviewing the day's notes. Many words were translated incorrectly, but I could understand the general meaning of the conversations. My concerns grew when Doris spoke with Mindy again on Tuesday. Hey, sister, how are you? Okay. No, not yet. Probably within the next hour and a half. No. No, no. I think so. It's so boring here. I don't care about him anymore. Maybe next week. Buck has a month-long trip to head office. He'll be out Thursday night. Yes, I work with him. Katie was with him. She says he's normal, you know, there. Probably just this one time. Just to spice up my life. Why do you care? 
You don't even get along. He'll never know. He might even like it if I learn a few tricks. You have your own opinion. Mine seems different. I hear the garage opening. I need to go. Love you too, sister. Bye. My gut's twisted. I didn't know anything, but the hint tore me apart. I searched the internet for a private detective. I drank about six ounces of whiskey and fell asleep on the cooch. Good morning, dear. Why were you sleeping on the couch? My stomach was bothering me. Damn, look at the time. I have to hurry. I have an early meeting. I had a lot of time and didn't have a meeting, but I couldn't even look him in the eye. After several calls in the morning, I spent the afternoon meeting with a divorce lawyer. I reviewed our family financial situation with her. She suggested that I quit or take a sabbatical. Everything else will be divided in half. I'll use the trip to headquarters to quit. My lawyer also gave me some good advice about banking and investing. I spent the afternoon doing some of these things. I checked at Angie's, and they don't sell used shoes. Any love I had left was leaking out like air from a nailed tire. Doris, look at these printouts. These are charges on our joint credit card. I have been informed that our account has been compromised and will be canceled. New cards will be mailed. We need to figure out which of these charges are not ours. From now on, use your own credit card. Are we going to have to pay for purchases we didn't make? No, no, that's one of the good things about credit cards. If it's not your purchase, you don't pay. Of course, since I made up this nonsense about the call from the credit card company, all the payments were ours. I cut our common cards. Doris, I read online that sometimes when they have your credit card, they can also access your bank account. What do you think about transferring all but $100 into a savings account? These accounts are not connected since they are in different banks. Do you think so? You know, I don't spend much time on our finances. Do what you need to do. Our savings account does not have an ATM linked. I made the changes electronically and then waited until Doris went to bed. Over the next few days, nothing noteworthy was found on the recorder. There was someone else in the kitchen on Monday night. I found the appropriate place in the recording and listened. It was Mindy and Doris. This is unexpected. Did you have business on this side of town? Dentist appointment. Thought I'd pop in and try to revive you one last time. Sorry, sister. I'm fed up with this life. It's time for a change. I had lunch with him today. Damn, you're an idiot. What if Buck finds out and files for divorce? This will be a one-time thing. Dinner, dancing, and who knows what else. I'm looking forward to having lunch with him afterwards. Don't do this, sister. I've been on the other side of this crap. Don't do this. I have to go. Traffic through town could be a problem. I'll call you tomorrow. Okay, be careful. I think that's it. I sent an email confirming a meeting with a private investigator. Another letter to my lawyer to update the claim. At lunchtime on Tuesday, I assigned a private investigator to keep an eye on Doris throughout Thursday. Once he is sure that she is heading to her lover's house or hotel, she will need to be served with a summons. After work, I stopped and looked at a few places for long-term stays. Doris was annoyed when I came home two hours late. Isn't your phone working? Your dinner is cold. Heat it up yourself. She disappeared into the bedroom. I left the food on the stove. I bought some fast food earlier. I have made a list of people to call, things to say, and various minor things to do in a divorce. On Tuesday, the recorder again showed one side of the conversation. Hi, sister. What's new? You sound like a stuck record. It'll be a one-time thing. That's what I told him. Well, maybe you're right, and I'll like it and change my mind. I guess that's the risk I'm taking. Who would want him if he leaves me? He's become so boring, so good luck to him if that happens. He's a real jerk lately. Yeah, that's right. I guess I don't notice anything from all these love-hungry women. Maybe I really am. We'll talk later. I don't think they ended their calls with love you anymore. Looks like things are getting pretty tense. My opinion of Mindy has definitely changed. Wednesday night, after a quiet dinner with Doris, I packed. There has been no hugging, kissing, or sex since the discovery was made last week. I'm no longer surprised that Doris is emotionless. I left an hour earlier than usual on Thursday morning, long before Doris woke up. During the drive to the airport, 
it occurred to me that I might never sleep in this house again. While waiting to board, Doris called. You left before I woke up. Early flight this time? No, I had to stop by the office. What are your plans for the day? I work until four and then nothing. I'll probably watch recorded shows. Are you still coming back on the night flight? Yes, they're starting to board. See you later. I pressed the end call button without waiting for her last words. This week, I registered for a new phone. I was going to cancel our current phone bills as soon as the paperwork was served. I used the airport wait time and flight time to copy everything from the old phone to the new one. It's so easy now. Just keep them together and choose a few items to convey. Everything at headquarters went much better than I expected. I was put on indefinite academic leave. If I return to work, I will retain my seniority and rights to pension. Savings. For the reason explained, they did so immediately. I offered to mentor my successor if they wanted. I was on pins and needles waiting for the detective's report. At six, I called Doris. Hey, Buck, how was your day? Very good. What's new at home? Not really. Boring day. When do you need to be at the airport? I'm heading to dinner with colleagues and then straight to the airport from there. Same procedure, different month. What are you going to do tonight? Just eat the leftovers and watch my TV shows. Well, have a good time. You know I love you. We'll talk later. I love you too. Since I was no longer working, I didn't go to dinner with my colleagues. I stopped and ate some healthy fast food. The first message from the detective came while I was eating my salad. The target is on the move. So much for I love you. I called my home phone and left a message. What's happening tonight? I called Doris's cell phone, but it went to voicemail. What's interesting going on tonight? That's not to say I didn't try. After dinner, I headed to the airport. I walked around the boarding gate restlessly, full of anxiety. I desperately wanted to know if I would have a wife or a new life. My text signal rang almost simultaneously with the call from Doris. I left the call unanswered. The text was from the detective. Target failed. I wasn't listening to Doris's voicemail when I received her text. Buck, please don't do this. I haven't cheated on you yet. It's perfect. More. This is why I'm getting a divorce, bitch. I took a photo of the text with my new phone, then called and canceled our cell phone bill. I also canceled our cable TV. This effectively removed our home Wi-Fi. A private investigator sent a video to my email with today's events. The first part of the video shows Doris leaving the house in her slippery blue dress with matching heels. Now everything becomes clear. Her first stop was a pharmacy, then she went to a hotel near the hospital. After a short wait, she was greeted in the lobby by a man who was ten years younger than her. Drinks and dinner with touching and caressing hands, several dances with freedoms allowed and accepted. They gathered their coats and headed to the elevators. As soon as they reached the door of their room, and the man inserted his key card, my man attacked. Doris Eckerman? Yes? You have been served with a subpoena. Mr. Bennett, you will be served with a claim for alienation of affection. If you are married, your wife will receive copies of my report, along with photographs and videos. I hope you have a pleasant evening. Doris tore open the envelope, while the man stood there, looking stunned. When Doris realized what was in the envelope, she collapsed to the floor. I've also included the full texts of the conversations from the kitchen. Doris was screaming something, but I couldn't make it out. The video has ended. I used my new phone to call my son and tell him my new number. I informed him that I was divorcing his mother due to her infidelity. I asked him to keep my new number secret, as I didn't want anyone else to know it. He reluctantly agreed. My flight home gave me the time I needed to lower my blood pressure. It really takes over your body. I didn't expect to be met at the airport. As I entered the arrivals area, I heard my name. Doris ran up to me. I dodged her attempt to hug me. She no longer had her blue outfit on. Buck, please, I love you. Don't do this. Can we talk about this? What? I don't even deserve a blue dress and heels? I guess you save those for your lovers? I'm sorry, Buck, it's not like that. I shouldn't have changed. I mean... I shouldn't have worn this. I'm so embarrassed. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have.
Doris, this is not the time or place to talk. Go home. I'm going home, too. Are you going straight home, or do you need to stop somewhere for more experiences? Buck, I'm sorry. I'm going straight home. Again, I had to push away her attempt to hug and kiss me. I didn't lie. I was heading to my house. This will be my new long-term home. It took me a lot more whiskey to calm down. My son woke me up around 6 a.m. Dad, Mom is crazy. Just call her. Don't drag me into this. Okay, Jason. Sorry about that, son. Talk to you soon. I used the hidden number feature to call Doris at home. Our old mobile phones were turned off. Hello? Doris, this is Buck. Get a lawyer. Have him contact my lawyer. Damn you, Buck. I was worried that something had happened to you. It's a little late to worry about me, Doris. I'm tired of being taken for granted. Get a lawyer. And I hung up. It's very strange to wake up without work. I walked a few blocks to the cafe. The weekday special was perfect for me. After breakfast, I told my lawyer and the private investigator my new phone number and address. My lawyer called shortly after noon to tell me that the bank and brokerage accounts had been frozen. She advised me to drop the alienation of affection claim because we had no evidence of any sexual activity. The private detective sent an additional letter. The man involved was single, although he lived with his girlfriend. Perhaps I will take revenge, but now it doesn't matter to me. They worked together so I could cause problems at the hospital if Doris objected to the divorce. We will both need cash for ongoing expenses, so the lawyers will have to negotiate a fair amount and frequency for these payments. I file it a claim to split the costs of the house and my current residence. If Doris wants to move out of the house, we can sell it faster and I will pay for my place and she will pay for her living expenses. My suit based on treason will not last. I did it for shock effect. I spent my first day of freedom crossing items off my list. My friends were shocked, but supported me. My mother, the eternal optimist, was for reconciliation. I told her I would do it as soon as she grew wings. With a low-paying job, no cash, and a low-limit credit card, Doris faced a difficult time. I called to talk to Jason, but Kelly answered, How is my beloved daughter-in-law? It's sweet, really sweet. Not only am I your favorite, but I'm also the one you hate the most. Do you have any idea how many times Doris called? She's acting incoherent, sometimes screaming, sometimes crying. Now you are truly my favorite. I am glad that she is suffering. This is just a small part of what she put me through. I don't think I want to know, but I'm not an idiot. Is she having an affair? Not only are you beautiful, but you're also smart. My detective ambushed them last night. I'm a little concerned about letting her sit with Jared. I can't make that decision for you. I'd love to meet you for dinner. Not necessarily tonight, but I have a full calendar right now. I'll talk to Jason. Is this a good number to call you back? Yes, it is. Please don't share it with anyone. Talk to you soon. Love to everyone. Love you too, Dad. Goodbye. Friday night was emotionally draining. The impact of everything that had happened had taken its toll. I tried to solve my problems with a little alcohol and a lot of painkillers. It was well after midnight when I finally found sleep. Breakfast on Saturday morning with Jason, Kelly, and Jared was enjoyable. They started ignoring some of Doris's calls. After breakfast, I stopped by our old house. I couldn't tell if Doris's car was in the garage, so I parked up the street and looked through the window on the side of the garage. She was home, so I decided to try again later. I might have to buy a clean shirt if I can't get inside soon. Hey, Jason. Long time no see, huh? Can you take your mom out or meet her? I need to stop by and grab a few things. Of course, Dad. I'll call you back and tell you. About ten minutes later. She'll meet us for lunch at noon. After I saw that Doris had left, I entered and began a full search of the house. I left a note. Came by to talk. Guess you're getting more impressions. I moved my motorcycle to a friend's house a few blocks away. I walked back and filled my car, which was full when I left the house. I stopped at an inexpensive clothing store and stocked up on snacks. I bought a thank you card that I addressed to Mindy and included copies of the text from the kitchen notes. Mindy, thanks for trying. Buck.
I spent Saturday afternoon and most of Sunday watching the Parimutuel races. I need a hobby because retirement is too boring and this was just my first day off. I bought the Sunday newspaper and looked at the advertisements for volunteer opportunities. On Sunday, I sat in a pari mutuel bet next to Martin, a retired insurance agent who is an avid horse gambler. He got me interested in betting. He proudly announced his election and won good money in bets that day. I repeated several of his bets, won several times, lost several times, and ended the day with $20 in the black. Quite cheap entertainment for today. Monday morning, I filled out the paperwork to become a volunteer at an animal shelter. My lawyer called to set up a meeting with me, Doris, and her lawyer. The meeting was scheduled for Thursday at 16. Oh, wise. I spent about five hours with Martin. He lost several large bets, but still managed to make a small profit. I lost about 10. Still pretty cheap fun. On Wednesday, I started working at an animal shelter. I had a four-hour shift. Love from these little creatures came at just the right time in my life. After my shift on Thursday, I settled into the conference room. Doris did her best to look presentable. Her lawyer and my lawyer showed us their grimaces. Quarrels began. Doris and I sat in silence while the lawyers argued. I deliberately sat on the same side of the table as Doris so that we would not look at each other. We will not accept a plea based on charges of treason. Mrs. Ackerman, what did you buy at the pharmacy the night you were served with the summons? Don't answer that. Should be changed to irreconcilable differences. We'll take that into account. Anything else? You didn't include child support. Good point. Since Mrs. Ackerman is the only one working, I propose that Mr. Ackerman receive 25% of her net earnings. Doris exploded. No way. He has a great job. A few weeks off won't change that. Mr. Ackerman did a great job. He is currently unemployed, and that was before Mrs. Ackerman received the subpoena. We propose to remove the mention of infidelity and agree to no alimony from both parties if this agreement is filed with prejudice. Can I have a few minutes with Mrs. Ackerman? We left the conference room. I watched Doris twist and turn in her chair. She needed a few wipes before we were called back. We have several conditions. First, if Mr. Ackerman finds gainful employment within the next 12 months, the issue of child support will be reconsidered. We want to eliminate the request to share the cost of Mr. Ackerman's home. He is always welcome in his home. The home will be immediately offered for sale, and upon sale the proceeds will be divided 60 to 40 in favor of Mrs. Ackerman. We request that the savings account be divided equally and paid immediately. Can I have a few minutes with Mr. Ackerman? They left the conference room. I quickly calculated the cost of the house. We had about $300,000 in net worth. It will come to me I can refuse $30,000 if I agree. We decided to accept the offer with conditions. We agree with this with one exception. Until the house is sold, Mrs. Ackerman will bear all expenses for the house. If the house does not sell within six months, it will be put up for auction. After a few whispered comments, an agreement was reached. As I was about to leave, Doris asked, Buck, would you stay and talk to me? Doris, as soon as the documents are signed and sent, I will meet with you. I should have felt great that everything had gone so well, but I sat alone in my room, sipping whiskey in the dark. I think how many people would change their minds about marriage if they knew how much it hurts when a marriage ends. The next morning, the animals made me forget everything. I really enjoyed spending my days betting on horse races. Martin enjoyed sharing his approach to analysis. I won a triple parlay, which brought me just under $200. What a thrill. The loneliest time was after dinner and before bed. I listened to music and read books. Sometimes I bet on horses online. You can get really excited about this because they offer horse racing all over the world. I visited pubs, but I felt so out of place there that I just went home. On Monday, after my shift at the shelter, I went in and signed an updated petition for divorce. I texted Doris, Dinner at our favorite pizzeria? What time is best? Almost immediately, the answer came. At 18, ow. 
I did so-so at the races that day. Martin scored a 6 for 30 200s. He spent 240 on the ticket. You need to spend money to make money. 24 is the biggest bet I've ever made. I wasn't feeling well as I sat across from Doris. Makeup couldn't hide her exhausted look. Buck, please let me speak without interrupting. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. And I'm not saying this because I was caught red-handed. I thought a lot and realized what a bitch I had become. I tried to find a reason. As soon as there will be money from the sale of the house, I intend to seek psychological help. I never meant to hurt you. These printouts clearly show how cruel I was. You have the right to blame me. My heart is broken. I cry every night. Please try to find a way. Get us back together. I love you more than ever. Doris, tell me about the blue dress and heels. Looking stunned, she replied. The dress? I bought it for the night. Why is that important? I was silent, not looking at her. I pulled out a photo of the first message from Doris and showed it to her. Doris, what does it say here? Buck, please don't do this. I haven't cheated on you yet. You couldn't have said it any clearer. In your mind, going on a date to have sex is not cheating. How did you put it? You have your opinion, I have mine. Even if we get back together, still means that not if, but when you change. Your inner essence speaks for you. I'm not going to wait until you find out that I'm boring again and you need to cheat. Who I am, what I have become, and what I am likely to be are incompatible with who you are, what you have become, and what you are likely to be. I believe you were honest when you said you don't care about me anymore. We were living a lie. You stopped loving me years ago. Your words and actions clearly show the image of a person who cares only about himself. You weren't worried about us anymore, only about yourself. Just because you're broken now doesn't make me any more interesting. I threw the divorce papers that had been prepared two years ago in front of Doris. I thought about asking you for a divorce a couple of years ago, but I decided I didn't want to hurt you. Isn't it funny? Well, you cleared that obstacle. You gave me the kick I needed to do what was right for me. The time for tears was when you rejected my offer to help. I hope you find what you are looking for. Another. I gave you a chance to deal with me honestly. I found the dress and shoes about a week before you received the summons. The shoes were already worn. I asked Angie's, and they told me they don't sell used shoes. My conclusion is that the dress was also worn. Goodbye's too good a word, so I'll just say goodbye. We wasted our money on this pizza. Doris sobbed, burying her face in her hands. I paid the bill and left. I bought a few more bottles of whiskey and was ready to calm myself down again. I tried some dance clubs and pool halls, but realized I wasn't ready for a new relationship yet, so I didn't stay long. I kept in touch with people I used to work with. I also had dinner with several couples that Doris and I had hung out with in the past. What I didn't realize when I left Doris was that I also lost my best friend. We did so many things together that almost everything reminded me of her. This made me sad, but not enough to give up my plans to free myself. A few days after filing the documents with the court, the first letter arrived from someone with the email address, Waiting Mr. Wright. Hi, Buck. I hope that we could meet. Can we start by exchanging letters? Let me know. Famer. This caught my attention. My first thought was that Doris was up to something. Wefemer, I like it. Tell me more about yourself. Tank. It was like being in a slow motion movie. I checked several times that day, but the answer did not appear until the next morning. Great. I'm a woman your age and I'm single. Enough about me. I heard you're going through a divorce. WFMR. I still wasn't sure it wasn't Doris. I decided to think a little before answering. I went to Pari Mutuel after my shift at the shelter. I'm becoming addicted to betting on horse races. I had my first winning ticket for over $500. I made a donation to an animal shelter. BUFAMR. Yes. I'm waiting for court approval. My soon-to-be ex-wife decided I was too boring. Are you married? Tank. She said she was single, but I definitely wanted nothing more than a free woman. The next day I received... I am divorced and have been for several years. Boring suits me. I don't like crowded bedrooms. What do you want in a woman? WFMR. It turned into a poker game. Neither side revealed too much. I still wasn't sure it was real. 
Wafemer, all I ever wanted was a woman who wanted me as much as I wanted her. Why me? Why now? Tank. I spent the day at Jason's, babysitting Jared while Kelly took care of business. Kelly told me the latest news about Doris. Doris now has regrets. But this was only a manifestation of a deeper problem. When people stop loving, you can't blame just one thing. Buck. Because I think you're right for me, and you're getting a divorce. Bubby FMR. I agonized over trying to expose Doris if it was her. I decided to be straightforward. WFMR, how do I know you're not my soon-to-be ex-wife? Tank, this slow dance was a kind of therapy. I always looked forward to the next letter. We never exchanged more than one letter a day. Buck, I'm not Doris. I would like to know how to convince you. Every scenario I imagine in my head could be staged by someone trying to deceive you. Let's get back to my program. I want you to want me. BFMR, I never mentioned Doris's name, so that told me she knew more about me than she wanted to admit. Well, BFMR, let's meet soon. How about this weekend? Tank. Buck, I'm sorry, but not until you get divorced. I don't want to get my hopes up just for you to return to your wife. Well, BFMR. Well, BFMR, I understand. It's probably for the best, since I'm still very confused. Twenty-five years have passed, and there is nothing left. Tank. Buck, you have a son, and now a grandson to be proud of. You have something to be proud of. I will never understand this. FMR. Okay, she knows about Jason and Jared. Definitely doesn't look like she's a casual acquaintance. Why you off FMR? Sorry. Sometimes I just get overwhelmed with emotions. I never asked if you had children. Tank and Buck. No kids. My marriage ended before we got to this point, and thank God, considering how it all turned out. What is it like to be retired? Well, MR. Who said I'm retired? This means she was probably talking to Doris. I wondered if it was Mindy. I dismissed the thought, as we had been at odds for a long time. Maybe one of the neighbors. There were several lonely women nearby. Perhaps one of them is divorced. What with FMR? Boring. I really miss work. All this free time is making it hard for me to let go of the past. How long did it take you? Tank. Buck, what time is it? I'll let you know as soon as I find my Mr. Right. But we FMR. Day after day, we exchanged one short letter. I didn't reveal much about myself, and neither did she. It was a fun game that had now gone on for two months. We spent several days sharing how lonely the evenings and nights were. She didn't reveal how she knew me. She at least admitted that we had already met. Doris tried several times to convince me to give up the divorce. I refused to meet her, but I talked to her several times. I guess boredom is better than being lonely. It was clear that she regretted her decisions. I had a cold heart. The next letter made me think it would be worth seeing where this goes. I decided to speed up our little postal dance. Buck, when we meet, once you become a free bachelor, what would you like me to wear? Wafmar, wafmar, in something that would look good on my bedroom floor, tank. The next day, an email arrived consisting of a series of emoticons. Smiling, embarrassed, winking, and then, I can arrange it. How long do we have to wait? Fmar, Fmar, the tentative hearing date is in a week on Wednesday. I can't wait to find out who you are. Tank. It took almost 90 days to get through the courts. I numbed myself the night it was approved. The pain is difficult to describe. Despite the joy that it was all over, there was a burning sensation that reminded me of the price I paid for it. Buck. Welcome to the ranks of middle-aged bachelors. When can we meet? Wef Emor. Wef Mir. You know my schedule lay. I will also look after the baby on Friday evening. Tank. The next morning. Buck, I went to the races but changed my mind. I'll try again on Saturday. WFMR. WFMR, thanks for the warning. I haven't shaved or showered in months, so this gives me time to clean up. Tank. Saturday morning. Buck, please be gentle if you don't want me. WFMR. If it were Doris, I wouldn't be so gentle. 
I had not yet composed a response when someone knocked on the door. I was shocked to see Mindy. She was wearing flip-flops, a gray sweatshirt, and black sweatpants. Mindy, this is a surprise. Come in. Wow, you've lost weight. You look great. Your hair looks really good with those highlights. I have fresh coffee. Would you like a cup? Thank you. Good, sir. Coffee would be welcome. I hear you're free again. It turns out that, yes. What brings you so early on your day off? I took the coffee pot and poured a cup. I turned around to see Mindy with her arms around my neck. Do you want me to be your Mrs. Wright? At one point, I wondered if you were my electronic flirt, but since we were always arguing, you know, what will Mr. Wright get? Well, if you put your hands under my sweatshirt, you won't find a bra. I took the hint. Our eyes were closed. Wow, you look really good now. I've loved you for a long time. I told Doris that she would regret it if you got a divorce. I'm here to show you how much I want a boring but caring man in my life. After a few sips of coffee, I think my clothes look good on your floor, don't they? Do you have a bedroom? We ordered pizza around dinner time. Mindy spent the night. I think I had more sex that night than I did when I was newly wed. Between sessions we talked. How is it that you and I never got along? It was kind of a love-hate thing. You were so sweet and caring, and the husband I married was nothing like that. I was always jealous of Doris. All married men were supposed to be jerks like the one I married. I got married and you just wanted her to be happy. She's a fucking idiot. I hope we can be more than friends. We had dinner on Sunday evening. Mindy was not like the woman. I had learned not to love. We talked about her life and mine. It all seemed so natural, but then again, we had been flirting for over two months. We returned to my place and settled down comfortably watching a movie. Loneliness keeps me company at home. I thought maybe you'd bring your loneliness to me, and while they're getting acquainted, we can sneak into my bedroom. You can stay as long as you want. I accepted her invitation, and we have been together ever since. We were tested for STDs together. When both tests came back clear, we started having sex without a condom. Having a partner who wanted to please and enjoyed it made sex fun again. Mindy came up with one of the best decisions we've made. Buck, before this gets too serious, I'd like us to go through counseling. I'm willing to work on our relationship. I want to understand what you've been through. And I also want you to understand what I've been through. I will. All I need is for you to be mine. I love you. Mindy, I think this is a great idea. I love you too. It helped me understand Mindy's divorce and her bitter attitude. This helped Mindy understand my situation. Moreover, it helped us find signs of when we were annoying each other. I need to remember that Mindy is not Doris, and Mindy needs to remember that rebound romances can be very difficult if the recently injured person is not given enough time to recover. I never once thought that the psychologist was making fun of us. And after one particular session, it led to the best sex of my life. Buck, it's time to tell us what you found out about Mindy. I learned that behind that mask of bitterness lies one of the most loving and caring women a man could want. Mindy called in sick the next day and wore me out. As for her family, everything became clear one night when Mindy received a call from her mother. Mindy seemed calm for the rest of the conversation. Let me make this easier for you. Never more. Do not call me. It's clear. And she hung up. What was it? Mom isn't sure if she can handle it. She said Doris will never talk to me again. I don't care if I never hear from them again. Let them live for years, struggling with loneliness and depression. I found what she wanted, and they can go to hell. I didn't understand her mother's attitude. She had one divorced daughter, immersed in loneliness, and another married to a boring man. It's not like he's another boring man. It seems nothing has changed. I used my cell phone to call Mindy's mother. Hello, Buck. What do you know about Doris's lovers? You know, the ones I found out about before I divorced her? She fell silent. Speak. I can't hear you. I did not know about it. Well, then shove your speech somewhere else further. I hung it up. Mindy smiled as I hugged her. I kissed her with the most passionate kiss I could muster. We held on to each other for a long time. 
The sex that evening was amazing. Mindy and I went to Las Vegas to get married. Jason and Kelly accepted Aunt Mindy as my wife. We get news about the rest of the family from them. Doris appears to have developed a drinking problem. This is a big concern for Kelly, since a drunk babysitter is not at all suitable for her. I offered to help pay for a legitimate daycare since I now have enough money after selling my house. I fell short of my goal of 12 months without child support. They opened a new store and I accepted the position of store manager. Doris will receive some money over the next 18 months. Mindy made my decision easier. I started making monthly donations to the animal shelter. Mindy started volunteering there on the weekends with me. I still play horses, only now from the comfort of Mindy's living room. This turned out to be much more difficult than Martin made it seem. Mindy's mother tries to convince Mindy to return to the family. Mindy says it's too early, but maybe in a year she'll feel differently. Doris sent letters to both Mindy and me. Mine was eight pages long, and Mindy's was longer. Mindy took hers into the bedroom when she started crying. I really wasn't interested in what Doris wrote there. Buck, do you mind if I start talking to Doris again? Mindy, you know I would never get in your way. She did get through to you, didn't she? Not just a little, she told me that if I ever broke your heart, she wouldn't forgive me. Have you read her letter to you? No, if I start opening this wound and it starts bleeding again, who am I going to blame? Call her, start building a relationship. I'll go for a walk around the block. They communicate regularly now, but I don't want anything to interfere with my relationship with Mindy, so I keep my distance from Doris. Mindy has become my new best friend, and we spend very little time together. She likes motorcycle trips. Loneliness doesn't seem to like me staying with Mindy and seems to have gone away. I heard that it may have found a place in Doris's apartment. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.